Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with the prettiest camera girl in the world, Pretty Miss Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Doing a great job as usual. Thank you. I got to tell you, today we're going to make slow cooker pork chops, and here's a tip. If you get up in the morning and you throw chicken breast or a roast or some pork in the slow cooker, make sure you brown it first. Because if you don't sear it up, it just turns into kind of like a gray chunk of meat. So you really want to give it flavor and texture. And we're going to actually go a step further. We're going to put it in seasoned flour, then cook it in this bacon grease that I got warming up in my frying pan here. And it's okay, because the bacon grease and the pork chops probably came from the same pig. Come on over here and let's get started. Easiest dredge in the world. We're going to start out with one cup of all-purpose flour. And you don't need more than that, because we just want to put a light dusting on these pork chops. And in my favorite little red cup here, hey, a heavy precipitation warning has been issued for our location. My phone just told me it's going to rain outside. So what I was saying before my phone interrupted me is, in this little cup is one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of garlic powder, the magic four that my dad cooked with all the time. We're going to put this here in our flour. Kind of mix this up a little bit. I don't have the right tool to do that, but I'm just going to use this fork and run it back and forth in there. And then we're going to take our pork chops. We're going to put it in our seasoned flour. Let me put a little pinch of this in this oil. Yeah, it's already sizzling, looking pretty good. We got some nice, big, thick, bone-in pork chops that Sheila took in the kitchen and rinsed off out of the package. And we didn't really dry them off because we want to kind of have enough moisture on there for the flour to stick on there, the seasoned flour. Oh yeah, doing a good job there. Perfect, perfect. And like I said, we only need one cup because we're just going to put a dusting on the outside of this and no sense wasting the flour, that kind of thing. All right. Now let me get two of these browned up real good, then we're going to throw the other two in there. All right, we've been pushing these little babies around in this bacon grease. There's some nice color there. Look at here. For about three to five minutes. Been peeking every now and then until we started getting that nice crust on there. I'm going to do this side here. I get a kick out of Sheila. She says, your phone just said a precipitation warning for your area. She says it's been raining for two hours, and they're just now getting around to tell us about it. I think that's funny. I'm sorry, but all right. We'll brown this side, and we'll throw two more of them in there. Oh, yeah, that's getting nice and brown on the bottom. I'm going to put these over on a plate. Now, I'm not going to put these on a paper towel because any juice that runs out of these onto the plate, that's getting poured in the slow cooker, too. All right, we'll throw in another couple of our lightly breaded seasoned flour pork chops. You did a perfect job on rinsing these off and leaving just enough moisture to get a nice coating on there, Sheila. All right, let's see here. I should probably have a little spoon or something, but you know me, if I could get by without going into the next room for something. I'm going to make it work. Here we go. Let's see. we got room for this other guy in there. Oh, yeah. They're thrilled to death being the same frying pan. Let's get these browned up and go to the next step. All right, these other two pork chops are browned up nice. And again, if you've got meat that you're going to put in your slow cooker, don't just chuck it in there. Make sure you sear it first. Now what I did is I reserved just a little bit of this seasoned flour that we rolled them in. And I'm going to mix in about the equal amount that I have left in bacon grease. Because 50-50 makes a real good roux. 50% bacon grease, 50% flour, and we're going to kind of get that working in the pan here. You want to leave this on kind of medium high heat. Turn that down just a little bit so you don't burn the roux. Cook that flour. I'm going to cook this for about a minute here. Be right back. All right, this has been on medium heat 
to medium high heat for about a minute, looking good. We're going to add a little bit of garlic in here, about a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. We're going to put in half of a nice big onion diced up. You can use any onion you want in this recipe. Doesn't matter if it's a red onion, white onion, sweet onion, whatever. We want to get that happening in there. Now, we're going to deglaze this with a little bit of red wine. And we just happen to have Shotgun Reds, Touch of Sweet Wine, only available in Tennessee. Put in about, oh, half a cup. If you go to shotgunred.com, you'll see the link to our web page that tells you all the stores that now carry it in Tennessee so you can stop in and get a bottle because it's great to cook with. All right. Now you can see this is still thickening up right away because of all the little dab of flour that I put in there. So I'm going to put in a little chicken broth to kind of thin it out. I end up putting in about a total of two cups of chicken broth, but I'll put in about a cup now. There we go. It's about a cup. I'm going to cook this for just a little bit. And we're going to pour this over the top of our pork chops once we put them in the slow cooker. I'm going to do a little something different, too, that I like to do in a slow cooker. I'll show you that in just a second. Now we're going to put in one package of Lipton onion soup mix in here. And these onions will start rehydrating and getting a little bit thicker as we go along. <laughs> I wish you could smell this. It's fantastic. I do want to cook it for at least three four minutes. Let that alcohol evaporate. And that's what I was going to tell you. I almost forgot. Don't pour wine in your slow cooker, then snap the lid on it. Because when you snap the lid on your slow cooker, it can't get the moisture out of there, and that wine, the alcohol, stays in your product and can actually kind of make it bitter or not taste very good. So if you're going to use wine, use it in the pan outside, cook away the alcohol, then pour it in. So you don't put it in your slow cooker. Oh, this is getting better and better. I took about a half a cup of chicken broth and I put in a tablespoon of cornstarch and dissolved it real good. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to put all the ingredients in the description box below. You do not have to go to a website to get our ingredients. You can just look right down below it. And now I'm going to put in here a packet, one packet of pork flavored gravy mix. Man, oh man, this is going to really start doing some magic here. Just go to the gravy section in the grocery store and you'll see beef gravy and chicken gravy and turkey gravy. Pork gravy, obviously, because we're doing pork chops. Add just a little bit more broth because we're going to need a total of about two cups in there. And our last ingredient in this frying pan, remember, we kept all that bacon grease and all them little crumblies that fell off when we were frying. We did not throw that away. And now we're going to whisk in a can of cream of chicken soup. All right, and I got a couple of herbs in a little cup over here. I got a teaspoon of parsley and a teaspoon of basil. And I'm not going to put it in until about the last hour of cooking time. And one other thing, as much as you guys like to go out and get fresh herbs to put in your slow cooker, slow cookers just cook them to death. It's better to use a dry ingredient. I know you don't want to buy store-bought, but trust me on this. If you chop up your parsley and stuff and put it in, it's just going to turn into mush through the cooking process. Don't add your herbs until about the last hour and add dry herbs because they stand the cooking process better. And we'll do that the last hour of the cooking process. Let me get this all mixed up and then we're going to load up our slow cooker. We have moved all that wonderful stuff we did in that frying pan to this little beaker right here. Cooled down enough for me to dip my finger in there. You should taste that. It is out of this world. Now we're getting ready to load up 
our slow cooker here. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Now we have these beautiful pork chops all browned up, but I don't want to just lay them in the bottom of the slow cooker. Now I know you can, but I got a couple little potatoes here, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give those little pork chops something to rest on. So I'm just going to cut some little eighth to a quarter inch slices of taters, and I'm going to line the bottom of this slow cooker with potatoes. So when I take that gravy and pour it over those pork chops, it's going to go down underneath and get underneath them instead of it just laying against that porcelain or whatever that is during the cooking process. Some of that's going to get down underneath there and it won't hurt to have a few potatoes dissolving in that cooking process. Take a look in here, Sheila. Isn't that what you should lay your pork chops on? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. I know it's six to eight hours away, but I can't wait already. Let's load these babies in here on top of our little layer of taters to keep it up off the bottom. And, of course, remember that juice I told you about I didn't want to do on a paper towel? Oh, look at that goodness go down in there. <coughs> you want to talk about goodness. This stuff right here is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> you know, I'm going to turn the camera off so I can get a spoon or a spatula or something and lick the outside of this bowl going around here. It's so delicious. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop our lid on here. And if you got a slow cooker like I got, Kind of pay attention to this because the setting on the front is off, low, high, warm. So I put some stuff in there one day and I thought, I'll crank that baby up to high. And I came back a couple hours later and it wasn't even doing anything. And I looked down here. You think that they would make it warm, low, high. No. <laughs> they make it low, high, warm. So we're going to put it on high for about the first hour to kind of get it going. Then we're going to kick it down to low. And all I can tell you is we're going to see you in about six hours to check on this. Do not pull the lid open. In fact, that just puts a curse on it. Don't open the lid. Let it cook. Because if you take it open and close it, it takes about 20, 30 minutes for a slow cooker to recover. We'll see you in about six hours. I cannot wait. By the way, Sheila, get me a spoon for this little gravy bowl over here. <laughs> all right, I can't wait to taste this. This looks fantastic even through the glass. And when it comes to this slow cooker stuff, I do not peak. It's been one hour on high to kind of build it up to temperature real quick and four hours on low, and I think that's going to be enough. Let's take a peek and see what we got in here. <laughs> Let's take a peek in here. Oh, wow. That smells so good. I turned this thing off about 30 minutes ago, let it cool down just a little bit. And let's take a look at our pork chops swimming down in there. Man, it's, this, it's just fall off the bone tender. Look at this. I'm trying to pull this up here without it coming apart, so to speak. Not sure if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Look at that. Wow. Well, I, I might have to serve this in chunks because it's just falling apart. Look at that. I can't hardly get it on the plate. It's awesome. Wow. Well, I guess it kind of means that we can portion it out any way we want. I'll just break off another little piece there. Look how tender that is, Sheila. It's really good. Now, this is what I've been waiting for. Kind of stir down in there a little bit. Get that happening. I'm going to take my little spoon and make me a dent in my taters over here. And I'm going to get me some of that gravy and put on here. Drizzle a little bit across the top of the pork chops. And what do you think, Sheila? It looks really delicious. You know, I was going to put some herbs and stuff in there, but I don't even think I'm going to because the flavor is so good, it really doesn't need it. This looks so good. You know, I don't even know why I picked a knife up because you don't need it. Look at this. You can just break them pork chops apart. i got to try a bite. Mm. That is probably one of the top 10 recipes we've ever did, and we have over 200 recipes. I love this. It is so, 
so delicious. Oh, you have no idea. Got to try a little bit of taters. Look at that pork. Just do it with your fork. You don't even need a knife. And that's those big bone-in pork chops seasoned up. You can put herbs in there if you want. It would probably add to it. You don't need to salt and pepper it because the flavors with that gravy and that Lipton onion soup mix is fantastic. I got to tell you, we're breaking for lunch as soon as we turn this camera off because this is so outstanding. You know, for years I watched on television where it says pork, the other white meat. The pork growers put that out. They got something here. These thick pork chops, which I've walked by at the grocery store way too many times. I eat a lot of beef and chicken and stuff, and I thought I'll do a pork chop recipe for our channel. I am so glad I did because this is so delicious done in the slow cooker with that gravy recipe and Lipton onion soup mix and all that stuff. For those cooking times, it just falls apart. You will love this recipe. Please give it a try because it's standalone outstanding. I'm telling you what, Sheila, this is just great. You haven't tasted it yet, but it's over the top, I'll tell you. I hope you subscribe to our channel. Try all our recipes. If you'd like to subscribe, it's pretty easy. Little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up over here in just a little bit. When it does, click on it. It'll say subscribe with a check mark. That means you're one of our wonderful subscribers. But right next to the word subscribe is a little bell. If you click on that, it'll put two little lines there because YouTube doesn't send you all of the recipes all the time unless you click that bell and put the lines. Then that means you want to be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. We really hope you do that. We're going to put another recipe up over here. It'll pop up on the screen. You can click on it. But most of all, try this. Slow cooker pork chops, whew, the way we did it, I'm telling you, it, I just got, I got to, one more taste. Oh, my Lord. Why have I been going by the pork chop section at the grocery store? I have no idea, but you just got to give this a try. And is it the best slow cooker pork chops you ever ate? Yes, it is. Well, if it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee. Saying, I hope you enjoy this recipe. Sheila, did you like this? I did. Say good night, Sheila. Good night, Sheila. Say good night, everybody, because I'm taking this in the living room right now. We're going to turn the camera off, and I'm having lunch. Sheila, I'll make you a plate. It's out of this world good. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye bye for now. This is great.